you ask most men their fitness goal, one of the most common answers would be getting a six pack. And you can't blame them. Whether you're watching fitness content like this video, a movie, or a random ad somewhere, it seems like abs are always present. And since the fitness industry knows many men aspire to have a set of chiseled six pack abs, there are also a lot of fake promises out there. From ads for the best diet to burn fat fast, to the best workout plans that guarantee you'll look like Brad Pitt in Fight Club in just 30 days. All of this combined with some unique supplements guaranteed to help you achieve your six pack. You don't need us to tell you to save your money, but let's be honest, are abs worth it? In today's video, we'll be going over eight things no one tells you about abs. This video isn't meant to demoralize you, rather gives you a realistic picture of what happens behind the scenes in the fitness industry. By the end of the video, you'll know exactly what you need to do to get a six pack and you'll be less vulnerable to shady programs that overpromise and underdeliver. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, it takes longer than you think. This is probably not what you wanna hear, but we wanna keep it real with you for most people watching this video, getting lean enough to the point where you have a defined six pack will take time. Especially if you're carrying around a lot of excess body fat, this isn't to say that you should give up and forget about your goals, but manage your expectations and have a clear idea of what to aim for. Getting a six pack mainly comes down to four things. One, how much fat do you have to lose? Two, how fast can you lose that fat? Three, your fat distribution. Four, how developed your abs are. Here's the main picture. The more fat you have to lose, the longer it will take. Regarding the rate of fat loss, some of you may think the faster the better, but this isn't true. As we've discussed in previous videos, rapid weight loss can be detrimental to your health, decrease your performance, lower testosterone levels, and increase the risk of losing muscle mass. Remember, the goal is to lose the fat and keep it off, not a crash diet, lose some fat and regain it in a few months down the road. If you're unsure what to aim for, a 2014 paper on evidence-based recommendations for natural bodybuilding noted that caloric intake should be set at a level that results in body weight losses of approximately 0.5 to 1% per week to maximize muscle retention. If you're looking to maintain your muscle, don't try and lose weight too fast. If you're already lean, take your time and stay within the recommended range of weekly weight loss. The next point, fat distribution, also plays a key role in defining a six pack. You may have noticed that people store fat differently. For example, some store more fat on their midsection while others store more fat on their limbs, such as arms and legs. Unfortunately, this is mostly due to genetics and there's not much we can do about it. Because of this, it may take longer for some to lose fat in the midsection, whereas others may find it easier. Your abs are a muscle like any other muscle, and the more developed they are, the more pronounced they seem. In other words, well-developed abs will pop out more at higher body fat percentages. Don't worry, we'll cover this in the video. Number two, not everybody can have a six pack. Here's the truth. You may be on top of your nutrition and training, lose a ton of fat and get to a point where you're lean enough to see your abs. However, this does not guarantee that they'll look like your favorite fitness model six pack abs. Because ultimately, your genetics have a huge influence on your abs. Here's what you need to know. First, we all have a six pack, also known as the rectus abdominis. It looks like a six pack because it's segmented into different sections, separated by tendinous inscriptions, which typically appear as fibrous bands crossing the muscle. Although most people have three to five fibrous bands, they aren't the same for everyone. Some people are born with more or fewer bands. Not only that, but the tendinous inscriptions can vary in thickness, size, and come in different arrangements. Some people have a six pack, others have a four pack, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And some have an eight pack. It's also the main reason why some people have asymmetric abs. Ultimately, it comes down to how many bands you have and how they're arranged in your rectus abdominis. Now that you understand how genetics influence your abs, you can see why it's pointless to buy a specific program or diet that guarantees you'll get abs like your favorite Hollywood actors. There's nothing you can do to change your genetics, so stop comparing yourself to others. Instead, focus on building your abs and getting lean enough so you can see them. Number three, you will lose muscle mass and strength. Seeing your abs for the first time is fun. There's no doubt about that but you will have to make some sacrifices to get to the point where you're shredded with that chiseled six pack look. For starters, for fat loss to occur in the first place, you need to be in a caloric deficit. In other words, you need to burn more calories than you're eating. This means you'll likely have less energy to recover from training, affecting how much training volume you can handle and your performance and strength in the gym. On the other hand, if you're too aggressive with your deficit, lose weight too quickly and increase the risk of losing muscle mass. To ensure that you maintain as much strength and muscle as possible, you want to be conservative with your weekly rate of weight loss. Remember the recommendation we gave at the start of the video. Eat a high protein diet and continue to train hard at the gym. 
As for protein recommendations to maximize muscle growth, the current evidence suggests anywhere between 1.6 grams per kilogram to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. If you're in a caloric deficit, which most of you will be if you're trying to get leaner, aim for the upper range of that recommendation. Lastly, your lifting experience and how much fat you have to lose will impact your ability to retain muscle and strength. Beginners with a lot of fat to lose can get substantial strength and muscle gains even in a deficit. In contrast, seasoned lifters need to be smarter about their nutritional approach and perhaps even add diet breaks to boost recovery and preserve muscle and strength gains. Number four, you won't get great pumps and your physique will look flat. Another thing not many people tell you about getting abs is that dieting affects your pumps and how your physique looks. For those unfamiliar with the pump, it's the swelling of the muscle cells and the fluid space around them. In other words, if you've ever trained hard and you felt like your muscle was full and about to burst, that's what a good pump feels like. There's a reason why Arnold loves pumps so much. They feel great and they make your body look muscular. However, as we mentioned in the previous point, your recovery and energy levels take a hit when you're in a cutting phase. This, combined with the fact that your body has less available nutrients and calories, will make it harder to train with adequate intensity, which may lead to lower quality pumps. On top of that, your physique may also look flat, which means your muscles won't look as full. This is mainly because your muscles don't have as much glycogen, thus decreasing the amount of water being drawn into the muscle. And because this combination of glycogen and water makes your muscles look fuller and bigger, you can expect to look flatter. If you're unfamiliar with glycogen, it's a primary fuel source that our muscles use during exercise. For example, when you lift weights or go for a run, your muscles will be tapping into their glycogen stores for energy. Glycogen depletion also affects your performance and strength. However, most recreational lifters don't need to worry about glycogen depletion, as lifting weights doesn't deplete that much glycogen compared to endurance sports like cycling or swimming. As long as you include some carbohydrates in your diet, you should be fine, as carbs are converted into glucose and then stored in the muscles as glycogen. However, to make sure you're still getting good pumps and not looking flat, there are some things you should do. For example, make sure to include carbs in your pre-workout meal. Your pre-workout meal is an opportunity to give your body energy to fuel your workouts without depleting too much muscle glycogen. The types of food you eat can vary based on personal preference, how far away your training session is, and what phase you're currently in. For example, if you're training in less than 60 minutes, you may go for an easy to digest carb source like a banana and oats. In contrast, if you're training in two to three hours, you can opt for a bigger meal with other fiber sources to delay digestion. For example, sweet potato with broccoli, a source of protein and some fruit. Number five, you'll need to train your abs with resistance and use progressive overload like other muscles. One of the most common ab mistakes people make in the gym is thinking you need to do a ton of six pack shred workouts or circuit training. This isn't true. First, getting a six pack mostly comes down to being in a caloric deficit and having a low body fat percentage so you can see your abs. Second, you can't spot reduce fat. In other words, doing a ton of sit ups and crunches won't result in a leaner midsection. However, from an aesthetic standpoint, you can make your abs pop out more with a higher body fat percentage if they are bigger. If that's your goal, you'll need to build the ab muscles like any other muscle. This means selecting a few exercises that give your abs good stimulus, training close to muscular failure with adequate rest between sets, and focusing on progressive overload. Your abs aren't a special muscle that need to be trained differently. Train them two to three times per week and they will grow. Number six, your pursuit of abs may kill your sex drive and testosterone levels. Many people love the idea of maintaining a six pack year round, but what they often forget is that being shredded all the time isn't great and a six pack doesn't exactly mean you're healthy. Although being relatively lean is good for your health, maintaining very low body fat levels such as under 8% for men lead to health problems like loss of sex drive, lethargy, low energy levels, increased irritability, increased hunger, and lower testosterone levels. This is most common among bodybuilders who, despite looking their best when they step up on stage, are also at their lowest level of testosterone. As a result, they feel the most depleted both mentally and physically. It's okay to have periods when you cut down and get very lean for a competition or a photo shoot, but don't try to maintain this year round as it's not sustainable, especially if you're a natural lifter. Number seven, getting abs can suck sometimes. In your pursuit for abs, you'll be hungrier, less energetic, and experience more mood swings. You'll have to be more careful at social activities around food and drinking so you don't go overboard with calories. This might make you wonder if having visible abs is worth it. For some, absolutely. For others, not so much. If you're the type of person who doesn't want to stop regularly drinking, going to parties, or you like eating out often, then maybe your main goal shouldn't be to have a six pack. This isn't what most of you want to hear, but it's the reality. Getting and maintaining visible abs requires consistency and dedication to your diet and training. It doesn't mean that you have to be dieting all the time, but it means being more mindful of your dietary choices. 
Number eight, abs won't get you more girls. It's easy to believe your whole life will be different once you get abs. You'll feel more confident, attract more women, and get more respect from others. But that's not the case, especially with women. A study analyzed answers from 68,000 people in 180 countries and found that personality was the most important quality in a man. With 89.9% of women considering kindness a very important trait, followed by supportiveness and intelligence and confidence. Physical attractiveness didn't even make it to the top of the list. However, one physical feature stood out more than the rest. And no, it wasn't the abs. Instead, an attractive smile is what most women find attractive. As you can see, abs don't get you more girls. There are many other qualities that you should focus on instead, like being supportive and kind. When it comes to being attractive, personality is key. There you have it. If you're looking to really bring out your abs, to diet down to low body fat, keep these eight things in mind. It will help you set your expectations right and increase your likelihood of success. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll genuinely help out the channel. If your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for a bit of an edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. And right now you can get 25% off your entire order, plus free shipping by using coupon code MONSTER at checkout. So head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.